Good. Yep. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us for another live video here in Eastwood Garage, part two of our How to Make a Fender Skirt with Matt. So, Matt, what do we got going today? So, uh, in the last episode, we showed how to put some shape into the panel and get uh, basically laid out. Uh, now we're starting to actually tip all the edges to give it, you know, the shape that we want and make it a functional part. So, what we've already done is we used our finger brake uh, to bend this bottom edge here. So, this is going to be... We'll show you on this fender here. So on this fender, that's that bottom edge is what sits there like that. And what we're doing now is we're tipping this top edge here that runs all the way around the outside edge of, of the fender skirt uh, so that it's going to fold in on itself to give it some strength. This is a, uh, a bubble style skirt, so they actually overlap a, a little bit of the outside of the fender uh, when they're done. So we're going to be folding this edge over and then it would have a piece of foam that would go against the, you know, the fender so it doesn't uh, scratch the paint. So what we're doing is we're tipping this edge. We've already done um, a handful of passes. We're going to do like one or two more. But we want to show you something that um, you guys might run into when you're doing this, when you're tipping an edge with a bead roller or in general. Uh, when you're doing an outside edge like this, what you're going to see is there's going to be some ripples in here as we uh, roll this and you need to make sure you keep those under control. That's actually when you're rolling an outside edge or tipping outside edge, uh, too much material ends up being there and you need to shrink it to keep everything under control and it doesn't pull the panel, the shape out of our panel here. So we got our new Eastwood Elite bead roller here we're using, which is really nice. Uh, one big thing, especially for this job, more so than the, the big throat is that uh, it doesn't have any, any flex at mm -hmm. all. So when we're doing this, we're doing a really, really sharp line on the panel when we first rolled this through and any flex would have made it really difficult to keep on my line. It would have made me have to work a lot harder um, to keep it straight on the line. So now we're... And it has standard shaft, so, it, so uh, we're using our forming dies with it. So, you know, any bead roller forming dies that run on that standard uh, size shaft you're good with. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. We got the soft lower wheel in here and then the sharp upper tipping wheel. Uh, in here. So we've run a couple passes. The key is, we're good, uh, is to put slight upward pressure. We don't want to try and turn this in one pass 90 but, degrees. But you're actually sort of forming this uh, by hand by putting, by forcing up, unlike like a bead roller. Yep. If you're just rolling beads in a panel to put strength in like a floor pan, it's all the machine that's doing it. Where this, yeah. it's actually, you're, you're pushing it up, you yep. know, to form it. Yeah, it takes a little more control and you got to watch. Um, Watch the panel a little more. Uh, if you start pushing too hard on this, it may start to slip on the rubber lower wheel. Um, there is another wheel I could show you in a second. You can use the helps with that um, a little bit, but you gotta go in a little bit at a time. And in this instance, we, we stand kind of different, where well, you may roll the panel differently than you would just rolling normal beads, because you gotta get in the best line of sight of the, of the uh, the line that we're rolling. So I'm pushing up real lightly as we go around, letting the panel feed. And you can see we got some pretty good force on this and there's no, no flexing occurring here with this, with the Elite Bead Roller, which is really nice. So I can really stay steady on these lines as I'm going around. So now that we, well, the first pass we put almost no pressure on it. So we kind of scribe a line in it. I had a line scribed or scratched into the panel that we followed. Um, now that we kind of set a line in it with the first pass, um, it kind of follows itself at that point, and I don't have to steer it as much. But you just have to keep a kind of the same pressure as you're putting it around, upward pressure on the panel. And if you see it start to slip just a little bit, you can kind of push in a little bit on the panel to help it so it's not slipping on the wheel. So we're just about at 90 here, which is mainly what we need. Really nice. Perfect. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> Especially for you. You're <laughs> yeah. Done this a couple times. So loosen the wheel up and you can see what's happening here. We got these, these big ripples in the panel. It's 
especially right there, that are where there's too much material and it's actually pulling the panel in in that spot, there'll be like a low spot because of that. So we just have to go around lightly and smooth all this up um, with the shrinker. Uh, if, you see a, if you see a ripple like this out, uh, more than likely that is that there's too much material there. Again, if you're rolling an edge on the outside like this, it'll create too much material. If we were doing it the opposite way, it would actually make it too short and we'd have to stretch it. But since we're going on an outside um, radius like this, there's too much material when you tip the edge. So we just need to shrink that up. Um, the reason we're doing this in short passes is because we, want, uh, we don't want too much material, the waves to get too crazy because then you can't fit them in the shrinker uh, and, the, and it's more difficult to control. So if you go a little bit at a time, keep the panel shape about the same the whole time. There's no big, huge dips in the panel. Uh, and you can actually see where the panels, like here, where there's too much material, and here, it's actually, the panel comes out like that because it's, it's got nowhere to go, so it's forcing the metal out there. So I'll put this in the, in the uh, shrinker, get this tuned up, and then... Uh, Should I go? Yeah, I think... Um, if you have any questions, well, I guess if you're a fan of Scotty C, he's not <laughs> here today, he's, he's taking tech calls today. So, um, but if you have any so, questions, you can, yeah, there he's, as you can see, he's not there. <laughs> so, there he was. But if you have any questions, um, I'll be over there. So you can still post them to Facebook, YouTube. I'll answer them or throw them over here to Matt. And uh, if you can get this thing on the fender stand. Oh, my oh, God. Dent. Scratched. What are we going to do? What is do? that? I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say it's about a 41 Cadillac fender, series maybe. 60 series 60 or something. It looks like about a Series 60. I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not really a Cadillac guy, but that'd be, <laughs> that'd be my guess. All right, I'm heading over here. Yeah, we had a, we had a little, uh, last time we were working on this, this is just a fender that we were using as a prop, and I didn't even really know it, it just had a nice shape to it. And we did a little contest live for everybody kind of guessed, and we had uh, a couple guys that guessed around the same time, but we had one viewer that guessed it, and we got a nice little care package with some Eastwood swag on the way for them. So, we're gonna go over here. This is our heavy duty uh, shrinker stretcher. Uh, you can change the dies out. We have the stretcher dies in here, but I'm not really using them right now. We have the shrinker dies in. The nice thing with this particular shrinker, uh, especially for a part like this, uh, it puts the panel at a nice working position here. If we had this up in the vise, it would be up above my head and would be kind of a pain to see what I was doing. So we're going to find these big waves. I have one right there that's starting. So I usually put that right in the center of the jaws where they're split. And the key is to, you push down, get it tight, and you just put a little bit of pressure. You'll actually feel the panel with my thumb here. I usually keep it right in the center where it's puckered out. And I'll push just a little bit on it. And I can feel it kind of doing its thing. You can actually feel the metal moving around there. So we got, let's see here. And I'll twist the panel, like, here's a good example. Right here, when I twist the panel a little bit, it actually accentuates these uh, areas where there's too much material and we need to shrink. So sometimes they, they won't show up right away, but you move the panel around a little bit, and all of a sudden, boom, it'll, it'll pucker up there. So what you can do is put it in the shrinker, again, right in that area. And we're not putting a full press of the pedal. I'm going real light. It's real easy to shrink with this, this heavy duty shrinker. I'm just trying to smooth those, those marks out, or not marks, the raised material out there. And uh, we're not trying to actually do a ton of shrinking because that's going to change our panel. So, do just a little bit here, and then we can kind of going real light on here to try and smooth some of this out. Now this edge is going to be completely rolled over basically on itself so you're not going to see this area so in this instance it's no big deal to use the, the, the marks that the shrinker might put in it. You don't have to worry about sanding them off or anything or having an issue with them. So we can see right there there's definitely one I need to jump over to. And if you guys have questions shoot them, shoot them over. Happy to answer them for you guys. And we're shooting a video for this, so what we're doing is we're just, we're just catching in the center of a project, or the middle of a project, rather. rather. And uh, if 
you guys want to see the full video, we'll have that out on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and you'll get notified when the video, this video or any other ones are up. We got another guess on what kind of fender it is. Oh, okay. Is it a Toyota Prius? Hmm. It might be like a first gen from 1940. Just, you know, the, the early Toyota Priuses. Maybe. Pretty rare. So I don't know. Probably, if probably not the best guess. No, well, it might be. Might have a Prius fan out there that could uh, tell us. Antique Prius Club of America might consult them. All right, moving around. So again, this is the heavy duty shrinker stretcher. Uh, the foot pedal attached to it, the foot stand is an optional thing, but it's really nice because it, as you can see, I can really work the panel without having to fight it too much because it puts it in a nice working position and I don't need a helper. So, we got, so we got our shape in it. We're starting to, this edge is coming around here. And what I can do from here is we can either put it in the, the tipping dies a little bit more, but once you're at 90, you can start actually, it'll fold over pretty easy on itself. So I'll show you guys a quick little section here where we're gonna fold this over and how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna put the panel, oh, let me jump on the other side. Here's, on our, on our webpage, if you click to contact us, there's actually a spot, spot here that says, do you have a question or comment, comment for our president? Yeah. That's a, I wonder if he knows that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna have to ask him later on. I wonder how many questions he gets. I feel like asking for you. Okay. Oh, I, think it, I don't think it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, he did cell phone number. Yeah. Uh, right to Brian's house. Um, no, we actually the original question was do we have uh, distributors in Australia and we do and I'm just trying to uh, get the link for everybody that are we have distributors all around the world actually and if you go on our website there's a spot where you can find them um, so I'm just gonna I'll add it to uh, YouTube if you're on YouTube right now I just ran into some stuff on our website I never knew existed <laughs> yeah. all right so what I'm doing here is uh, we want a pretty, I don't want to say, a sharp edge is the way I would describe it here uh, on here. We want a pretty crisp edge, that's probably a better word to use, uh, on this bend line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can choose a dolly that has a fairly um, sharp edge on it. And uh, we can go, let's see if Joe can get on this. So these two dollies, uh, this is a post dolly that we, we have here. It's another one of our dollies from our general purpose kit. So both of these have pretty sharp edges on them because we're going to want to actually hammer the metal over this. Uh, this one's a little rounded, so once we get up in here, that might work a little better. But down here in the, the bottom area, so I'm going to put that right in our line where we were tipping. And I'm going to start. hammering that edge over and you can move a little bit. But the key is that we'd already tipped, we already got most of the shape into this by tipping it on the bead roller. So I don't have to worry about as much, uh, uh, I don't have to worry as much about getting my dolly off of our line and, and creating a, a mark that we don't want. Sorry, Joe. So I'm hammering on the top edge right here of the panel on where we want to fold it. I'm actually hammering up here, not down here. And what that does, it's just the leverage helps us by pinning the panel at the bottom there with the dolly and hammering on the top like that. That helps us. So right here's uh, a good example. You see how there's a gap right in there? That's because this is a completely straight dolly right in there. It's a straight line and this panel's curving, so we can't necessarily use this dolly in there. It was great for that area where it's straight, but we need to, uh, we need to switch that over there. So we're gonna go to this one that has a slight little bit of a curve to it. There. 
And what that does, that allows us to follow the shape of the panel. And again, notice I'm not going 100% over quite yet. We just want to work it slowly. Because we still have a little time to adjust before we fold it completely. So you can see I'm pushing this dolly um, maybe 15, 20 degrees off the panel from flat right in that area where we tipped already. So I did a little over half there. So it's starting to come around. You can see the key is using that sharp dolly is you can see this line up here is really nice and crisp. If I was using a dolly that had more of a rounded edge, when I was hammering on that, it would have really rounded this edge over here and it would have started um, getting out of shape down below, which we don't want. So got a nice crisp edge there. Um, since we're not fully folded over completely, if I do need to adjust something a little bit, I can pull this back up a little bit and hit it with the shrinker. Um, like in here, it's a little um, rippled. You can probably see in here, there's all these ripples. So what I'm gonna do before I do the final folding over of that, I'm gonna go through with the shrinker and hit those whole areas. Just kiss them with the, with the very edge of the shrinker and that'll smooth all of those out before we hammer them over, which is no, the correct way to do that. Any questions so far? Yeah, actually, we have a question here on Facebook. Uh, Ronald would like to know what you're going to use to, to um, sand out the marks. I guess he means the marks from the, uh, oh, the, from shrinker. the shrinker. Yep. Uh, so the shrinker does create some uh, marks in it from using it. Um, I mentioned a little earlier while I was using the shrinker, uh, then in this instance, uh, it's no big deal because this edge is getting folded under and you're not going to see it. It's going to be folded behind. So it's really not an issue. I wouldn't even address it. Um, but if you're doing it on the front of a panel where you can actually see the, uh, the shrinking marks or the shrinker marks, the teeth marks, usually with a DA sander, like 80 grit, you can take over it and just work those out and blend them out a little bit. Um, you really don't want to take a flap disc or anything to that area because it's going to thin the metal out really quick. But you can take a DA sander with 80 grit or even 36 grit and just kiss it a little bit with the sander and that'll usually take it out. And then at that point, after you, you hit it with the sander lightly, your high build primer is going to fill that in, um, and then you can block it all out and you'll never see it. Uh, but as long as you sand out the real heavy ones, um, you, you should be completely fine. So, good question. Any other ones? That's it for now. All right, cool. So, that's all I got. I'll show you guys on the fender here. Maybe you can see a little better what we're doing. And again, we're doing a full video on this. So, we were just showing you a little, couple little tricks on this. So this is going to get rolled over, fit underneath, like so, and our, ed our edge will be tipped pretty much all the way flat with the panel so that it'll sit flush against here and we'll have a nice set of flush or, or uh, I'm sorry, bubble skirts when this is done. So it should be pretty cool. Any other questions? That's it for the questions. Cool. Like Matt said, don't forget um, the video will be probably out in a couple weeks. Yep. As soon as the whole fender skirt, or if you missed part one, part one's on YouTube, and uh, you can watch part two. It should be done processing, so you can watch part one and two, and then the whole vi video in what, like, probably two weeks. Joe, you have this video done tomorrow, right? No. <laughs> yes. Yeah, probably in a couple weeks. If you just check out our, if you just check out our YouTube channel. So. Cool guys. Well, thank you for watching. As always, if you have any uh, products uh, or techniques or pro projects you'd like to see us uh, working on or showing. 
uh, definitely drop us a line and let us know. We'll try and do a video on it or uh, jump in and do a little live like this. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.